Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the news update, the latest information brought to you by our editorial team on 22 Hours Channel. In today's program, we will present the following main highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, due to the influence of Typhoon Doksuri, heavy rain poured down again in northeast China, causing water in many rivers in Heilongjiang province to exceed warning levels. In which, there are rivers and localities that are experiencing the highest amount of flood water in the past 20 to 30, even 50 years. According to the latest information, at 12 noon local time, the Heilongjiang Provincial Committee for Flood and Drought Prevention decided to raise the flood control emergency response level from level 3 to level 2, equivalent to level 2. Comparable to the previous Beijing and Hebei. The decision was made after the province suffered from heavy rainfall for the past three days and was forced to issue many meteorological risk warnings yesterday, such as strong convection warnings, rain warnings, large warning of risks of geological disasters and flash floods. In a notice issued yesterday morning, after raising the emergency response level for floods from level 4 to level 3, Mudan Jiang City in Heilong Jiang Province said that in front of the serious flood situation on the river Heilang here, the hydrological and irrigation agencies have predicted that this river will experience a flood only once every 30 years, while the city of Mao and Jiang will have to suffer a flood every 20 years. Once. Heavy rainfall causes water levels in many rivers to rise. According to the monitoring and forecasting of the local hydrological agency, as of ATAM today, there were 31 reservoirs in the area operating above the allowable flood level from 0.1 to 4.81 meters. The water level of 19 rivers exceeded the warning threshold from 0.2 to 2.47 meters, of which 7 rivers exceeded the safe water level from 0.37 to 1.24 meters. It is expected that some rivers such as Keen and Laplam rivers will experience floods only once every 50 years. In a notice just sent to the capital of Harbin and the city of Mudanjiang today, the Heilongjiang Provincial Committee for Flood and Drought Prevention and Control has asked these localities to improve their political bravery, focus maintain high level of vigilance, uphold a sense of responsibility, well aware of the seriousness and urgency of the flood and disaster situation, as well as the importance of doing well in flood prevention and rescue work. Disaster Assistance Today the latest forecast from the Harbin Meteorological Station shows that this heavy rain is extreme. The rainfall in the south of Ngu Thuang and Thuangshai district cities in the area has been close to or exceeded the highest level in the past year. History It is known that Heilongjiang province is home to the largest and oldest oil field in China and is also a major food-producing province of the country. Wuching City is one of the top five rice-growing districts in China. Currently, the rice fields here have been heavily flooded and are in danger of losing everything. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment a car plunged from a bridge that collapsed due to torrential rain in northern China scared many people. Shocking dashcam footage filmed in Harbin City, Heilongjiang Province, China yesterday shows a white car plunging from the collapsed bridge into the raging water below. This situation became even more unbelievable when the driver of the white car was miraculously rescued by people at the scene. Other videos further revealed that not only a white car, but also another black car also crashed into the bridge. Realizing the dangerous situation, emergency response measures have been taken by the local government, and the affected road section has been strictly controlled in both directions. For traffic through this section, vehicles are forced to leave the expressway and take a detour to avoid danger. Traffic police and road management agencies are urgently handling the situation at the scene, to ensure the safety of residents and pedestrians. No casualties have been reported so far, but the situation remains tense. Rescue teams and related forces are doing their best to participate in the rescue operation, while controlling and ensuring safety at the scene. The mountainous area on the outskirts of Beijing, China still faces a high risk of geological disasters, after a series of thunderstorm warnings for two days today and tomorrow in the Chinese capital area. The Beijing Hydrological Station has issued a yellow warning, the third level on a four-level warning scale in China, about the risk of heavy rain, strong winds and lightning, and forecast thunderstorms to continue. Covering many capital areas for two days today and tomorrow. The agency also issued warnings about the risk of geological disasters, 
such as landslides, in most of Beijing's mountainous areas. Notably, suburban districts such as Fangshan, Mondagu and Matvan are at high risk of flash floods. On Wednesday, the Beijing Hydrographic Station recorded the highest amount of rain not seen in 140 years due to the impact of Typhoon Doksuri. Heavy rains caused flooding in Beijing, killing 11 people. From dangerous flood discharges caused by rising river levels to residents trapped in flooded cities, this situation is challenging disaster response systems with prolonged record rainfall, long periods of water withdrawal, and more. Weeks after a strong storm for many years. When Typhoon Doksuri made landfall in southern China last Friday, heavy rain poured down, breaking the 140-year rain record set in Beijing. Even the amount of rain poured into Hebei exceeds the total rainfall of the whole year. Continuing as the remnants of the storm reached China's northeastern border provinces and rain began to subside, an area the size of England struggled with the logistics of safely releasing water to the mainland, waterways and reservoirs, and rescued tens of thousands of people trapped in their homes. The High River Basin, the confluence of five rivers in northern China, is undergoing flood evolution. State media reported the other day that technical flood control systems are said to face their harshest tests since the 1996 flood. In the summer of 1996, widespread flooding in the Yangtze River Basin in central China claimed the lives of about 2,800 people, damaged millions of homes, and inundated many arable lands. Authorities in Ebi raised the disaster emergency response level to 2 from 3, while Beijing maintained its warning for landslides in the suburbs. Flood waters can take up to a month to recede in Hebei. There, the city of Zhuzhou was the hardest hit. About 100,000 people in the city have been evacuated so far, or one-sixth of the city's population, according to an official from the Water Resources Ministry who revealed yesterday. China has long been aware of the risk of urban flooding, with rapid urbanization in recent years creating large urban areas covered in concrete floodplains. Extreme weather caused by global warming is making it worse, Official data shows that about 98% of China's 654 major cities are prone to flooding and inundation. China's National Weather Service said rainfall in the northeastern provinces could increase by as much as 50% in August. One severely affected area in Zhuzhou City was the town of Matu, where roads turned into rivers, power and water supplies were cut off, cell phone signals were lost and people were trapped in their homes. Rescuers used rubber boats to reach people stuck in flooded areas. According to China's state broadcaster, in places where the water reached knee high, people were transported to safety by trucks. However, the rescue effort still faces many difficulties. Emergency management officials and local authorities have stopped accepting new rescue teams from elsewhere, citing blocked roads and lack of coordination adding to safety concerns. State media said rescuers from all over China have offered to help with flood relief in Zhuzhou, but some have not yet received approval from local officials. China now faces more stormy weather with Typhoon Cannon moving over the East China Sea towards Japan and forecast to make landfall in China's Zhejiang and Fujian provinces over the next two days. Images of cities deep in floodwaters raise questions about China's preparedness for extreme weather events. Flooding has affected at least 30 million people in China since the beginning of 2023, including 20 people killed in torrential rains over the past few days. According to Bloomberg, after the 2012 floods in Beijing that killed 79 people, China has invested billions of dollars to deal with the extreme rainfall and accelerated construction of sponge cities. Simply put, these cities increase their ability to absorb rainwater by using rooftop gardens, absorbent sidewalks, underground water tanks, and then slowly releasing it into river systems and reservoirs. Over the past 10 years, dozens of cities from Beijing in the north to Chongqing in the south have moved in this direction. But what is happening seems to be shaking that tack, as rising global temperatures have fueled massive urban rains. Take Daxing International Airport on the outskirts of Beijing as an example. The network of landscape lakes, cisterns and drainage systems here can absorb rainwater of approximately 1,300 Olympic standard swimming pools. Yet the airport's runways were still flooded during the last record drain in Beijing, more than 744. 8 mm from last Saturday to Wednesday this week, the highest in 140 years. In the neighboring province of Hebei, Singtai City, although responding to the sponge movement since 2016, 
could not stand it when it had to receive two years of rainfall, about 100 centimeters in just two days recently, according to news site, Cation. The problem with the Sponge City strategy, according to DR. Hong Chuang Tu of the Australian National University, is that it does not take into account extreme weather events. The plan was initially quite good because it took a comprehensive approach to urban water treatment issues, including pollution control, storm response and flood mitigation. However, it does not take into account extreme events and disasters such as flash floods, commented Dear Hong Chuang Tu. Dear Le Chu, a researcher of Greenpeace, pointed out that the water treatment designs of the Sponge City strategy are based on rainfall over the past 30 years prior to 2014. Therefore, it cannot be adapted. With the current climate change situation, for example, by 2020, Zhengzhou City of Henan Province has invested 53.5 billion yuan in spongification, even some areas are left vacant for flood water drainage. But just a year later, a catastrophic flood claimed the lives of 380 people in Zhengzhou and caused property damage of 41 billion yuan. Even real sponges can't absorb endlessly, Ma Tuan, director of the Institute of Public and Environmental Affairs in Beijing, told Bloomberg, adding that this strategy needs to be combined with solutions. Other methods to cope with high rainfall Urban development in this billion population country is increasingly taking into account storm response. With cities located on areas that were once natural drainage systems such as lakes, swamps, and forests, China must build new storm water drainage infrastructure. Another secret lies in expanding green infrastructure, i.e. parks, terrace gardens, in urban areas. It is thanks to this natural storm and storm response system that the 800,000 residents of Chizhou, one of the earliest sponge cities, avoided flash floods in 2016 despite the rainfall that was at least above normal that year. 30%, according to a Chinese government assessment. To enhance the efficiency of sponge cities in China, DR. Tuan proposes to reuse old creeks built for flood discharge and flood diversion. In parallel, it is to step up the warning system to minimize damage. Our newsletter for today is here to end, please leave any feedback below in the comments. If you find it interesting, give us a like, comment, share and press the bell to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and see you soon. That concludes our new bulletin from 22 hour. Thank you all for your attention and viewership. Please leave your feedback in the comment section below for us to respond promptly. Goodbye and see you again.